I want to call your attention to the, the ninth chapter of the Psalms, the ninth Psalm. And in particular, verses 19 and 20. But I want to begin our reading with verse 17. Psalm 9 and verse 17. The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. For the needy shall not always be forgotten, not always be forgotten that the expectation uh, of the poor shall not uh, perish forever. Arise, O Lord, let not man prevail, for the heathen be judged in thy sight. Put them in fear, O God, that the nations may know themselves to be but men. And Father, I pray that as you have already moved in our midst through the music and through the communion service itself, that your word would go forth like arrows into our hearts and our lives. Help us to be more like Jesus, I pray. In his name, amen. amen. America, last Friday, 238 years old and still going strong. Getting weaker. And some of us who are almost that old can attest to the fact that, yes, growing old does make one weaker, or at least renders us weaker. But God has blessed America in a great way back through the years. What made America great? This book. Yes. Yes. The Queen of England was asked one time, what has made England so great? Because the sun never set upon the British Empire back in those days. And she pointed to the Bible or picked it up and said, this book has made England great. Well, there are many things that enter into why America was great. But God has guided it, and his power has been with America through these years, from the signing of the Declaration of Independence down till this very day. Though things are getting darker now, but there are millions of lights throughout this land, godly, good people, blood-bought people who are God's own. And no matter if we let the light flicker, there's still light. How many miles is it, they say, on that one ad on television that you can light a candle at night and you can see that light from the candle? And thank God for Christian people all over the world, even to this day. But there are voices crying out, not only in other parts of the world, hatred for America, but even within America itself. There are those who despise America and despise the flag of America and will not pledge allegiance to the flag. Well, what's right with America? Freedom! You can do what you want, when you want, and where you want it. Now, of course, there are limitations here within the law, of course. And you can't step on your brother's toe without paying the consequences of that. But we have the best form of government. But this democracy that we have and have enjoyed through the 238 years is only possible. I mean, America can only remain great as long as we are a righteous people. And we are in trouble. We have turned our back upon America. And the atheist groups within America are growing. And they're vocal. What can we do? What can we do? Americans are peace-loving people. But you can only push us so far. At this wedding yesterday, there were a number of my grandkids and my kids there. If somebody had come in with a gun, I would have made a lunge for them. I would have stood up, you know, for my family. I can remember, because I'm old enough now, to remember what happened in the late 30s and early 40s. I can remember when it came over the radio about Hitler marching across Eng uh, toward England and what would happen if England fell? 
And after supper, almost every night, an old man, he was a single man. He was in, by that time, probably in his 70s or maybe my age. And he'd come over to listen to the radio with my dad, and they would drink coffee. He didn't come over for supper. He would come over afterward. And I can remember their talking. I can remember some of the things. And I remember how this old man who had neither chick nor child said before we got into the war, we've got to get in there and help them. My dad said, no, I've got two boys who were older than myself. And they were in the service later. I've got two boys and I didn't raise them for cannon fodder. But things changed at Pearl Harbor. And America immediately declared war and went into the fray. As Ronald Reagan said, you have to have a, straight, a, a strong military because there are many madmen in the world. Yes. And, and though we may not like war, I can remember the words of President Roosevelt. I hate war. Eleanor hates war. And I, I almost can remember him saying, fella, who was their dog, hates war. <laughs> and I'm sure he didn't say that, but you know where I'm going with this. But still, in spite of the fact that we entered into that and freed the world and then poured millions of dollars, which we borrowed, uh, millions of dollars into rebuilding these countries, we're still hated. What's wrong with the United States? We've looked a little bit about what's right with the United States, our freedoms. And thank God for that. A beautiful country with beautiful people. But there's a lot of greed and a lot of dishonesty. All of you who are elderly have gotten calls on the telephone and you can just about smell that it's for identity theft. The only thing they want is to get a bank account number and a card number. Dirty, rotten, rotten people that they are. I used to live in Kalamazoo in that Edison neighborhood where almost weekly there's a killing. This is all, all of this is wrong in America. All of this that, that you know, we have not raised our kids right. And everybody has done that which is right in their own eyes. Yep. Then there's a falling patriotism. Where is the love for the flag? Where is the man that would say, give me liberty or give me death? Where is the one that would say, I'll stand up for my country? There's an anti-Christ and an anti-God spirit in America today and almost an anti-flag spirit in the world today. Can America survive this? That's where we come in. Come back in your, in your Bibles to verses 19 and 20 of Psalm 9. Arise, O Lord, let not man prevail. Let the heathen be judged in thy sight. Put them in fear, O Lord, that the nations may know themselves to be but men. Here's the way we come in, because Jesus said, Ye are the light of the world, and the darkness is closing in. Why? Because we have not trimmed the lamps. We have not Lift the candles. And we've let our light go out. Napoleon said, if it were not for this red spot, we could conquer the world. Hitler said that too. And he was talking about England with all of its Christians. But now, we've pushed the blood back. We've let the lights go out. What can we do? Turn with me to another passage in the Old Testament in first or in Second Chronicles seven fourteen, and I've used it several times as an illustration, but listen to the words. If my people, which are called by my name, hey, that's talking right to us, folks. Christian people, God's people, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. What does it mean? If my people shall humble themselves. At this wedding yesterday, my grandson is 
well, like a hill, you know, he's a real rock and jello, like the rest of the hill men. But he's a tall man, and they were, they were giving their pledge to each other, you know, and they too became one. She was also a tall woman. And I thought, I just bet you that she's going to call the shots in the house, in the home. Now, if you want to know where we are, I make all the big decisions in our home. Whether we go to war, whether we increase the national budget, and a few things like that, and Mary takes care of the rest of the things, you know. <laughs> you can talk to her later, but hey, it's the truth. <laughs> now, we've had 50 years, almost 50 years now of marriage, and I don't regret one day of it. That one day was back in 1970 in May. <laughs> but the older you get, I was with my son Larry yesterday, and Larry is 60, and Larry's not married. And I'm trying to tell him, you know, because he can't find a woman that will accept him for what he is and who he is. Who is he? He's a golf nut. And when he gets through with work, he's on the golf course. One time they had to pull him off because it was a lightning storm. And they had to go out with a cart and drag him in. I said, Larry, you're 60. You're getting up there. It's time that you find somebody. Because in old age, you can hunker down together, you know. And two bodies can bring warmth one to the other and, and uh, help each other and so forth. But I can't find anybody that will accept me for what I am. <laughs> All right, so he's married to golf. But humble themselves. It's humble not before, I mean, not being a milk toast. It's not that at all. Moses was the humblest man on earth. And yet, when the people of Israel would, would sin against God, he could stand up on his hind legs and bark like the biggest of dogs. But he was humble before God. And when the people sinned, he fell on his face before God. He was humble before God. He was not too big for his stretch pants as far as God was concerned. Well, I go on. And pray. Oh, the power of prayer. But I'm talking about not just a window shopping type of prayer. When Mary and I get out of town once in a while, you know, like all women, you love to shop. Well, men don't like to shop. But once in a while, I'll go in the store and I'll look around. And somebody, the clerk will say, can I help you? And I said, no, I'm just, I'm just kicking the tires and my wife's doing the shopping. Uh, okay, praying is, has got to be asking God for something, seeing a need, and actually praying and, and uh, pouring our heart out to God like Jacob, who was in trouble in the Old Testament because his brother was coming toward him to get even. But Jacob wrestled with God all night, and he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me and until you bless me. And this is the type of prayer that we ought to have for America. Thirdly, he said, if they'll seek my face. Oh, only about one-fourth of the people in the United States go to church, if even that much. You remember the old days when this community, and some of you are old enough to remember the old barns out in back of the church, and the horse you could drive in there and... Uh, People came from all over the community, and the church was filled out, a lot more so than this morning. Back 100, this church is over 100 years old. But what, what's happened? Seek my face. Seek him with the same fervor that we seek pleasure. Don't you just love to go to the ice cream house? You know you shouldn't, but, oh, you just got to go. And with the same fervor that, that you go at that strawberry Sunday or whatever it is. Or like my son with his golf, with the same fervor that he has for that, that we seek the Lord and even spend a whole day in prayer seeking the Lord. How long since you've had such an, such an experience and when you have then just felt the presence of God come upon you to where you almost felt like you couldn't contain and you felt if God did not remove his hand, you'd explode. 
Or haven't you ever experienced that? And then turn from the wicked ways. Those wicked ways may be just an attitude or a a spiritual thing, you know. I didn't have the wedding yesterday, and I thank the Lord for that. As you know, I don't particularly appreciate weddings, so uh, the time is coming very soon when I'll say, when somebody calls, I'm sorry, I'm just too old, I don't take weddings anymore. Just a bunch of kids. There were three people with suits on there. The preacher, a four because one, the, one of the grandpas had a suit on. The preacher, the groom, and the, the father of the bride. They had suits on. But I looked down and they had different colored tennis shoes on. I thought, whoa, what in the world is this? And then I thought, it was a young preacher, you know. They don't do things like they used to. And I was judgmental. And I thought, I don't like this, you know. I like the old ways. And sometimes we can get a little bit too straight laced. And we can get, and we see what's happening in the world, going from that to the world. And we get angry. And that's not right. You know, oh, we can hate sin. We can, we can hate the devil and all. But we don't get angry. We melt before God. We have to be filled with the love of God because therein is our strength. Turn from their wicked ways. We're too old to get into some of the deviltry we used to, but we can still sin against God and break his heart and grieve the Holy Spirit. And we're to put the sins on the altar and then forsake them. The problem, you know, the Bible talks about living sacrifices in Romans 12, 1. The only problem with living sacrifices, we get up off the altar. Lord, take me. I'm your man. I lay my life on the altar. And then Monday morning, we get back up and do our own thing. But there are three, there's a threefold promise in that verse also. He said, I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin. And I will heal their land. Is it possible that God can move in? Billy Graham said this. That God has given us another chance. And he said this not too many years ago. And if we don't straighten up, it's going to be judgment. I believe the Lord is coming soon in that which we call the rapture to take his people home. But I'm not sure that America is going to go unscathed. It's very possible before the rapture that America will see the judgment of God upon us. Do you realize that there are enough people that hate us right within America itself? That two bombs strategically detonated over, say, like Philadelphia and one of the cities in California or Arizona could put out the whole grid throughout the United States and our power would be gone. We'd be back to horse and buggies. I mean... We make some stupid decisions in America, too. Global warming? Well, if it is, it's so minute. And they say, oh, the ice the ice is, is melting up in the Arctic circles. No, it's not. It is not. And some of the leading scientists in America will attest to that fact. Why are we buying into it? Because the libs have have promoted it. And the papers and the newscasts and all have bought into it. They've got a script that's written out. We're stupid. I was at the crossing here in Marcellus the other day, and a train went through, and you know there are about 100 to 120 cars and they were all coal cars. But we're on the verge of saying, no more coal in our power plants. You know what that's going to mean? That's going to mean that your electric bill is going to go up at least double and maybe three times. How stupid can we be? But God may judge America in a multitude of ways. There are so many 
training now to be terrorists right within America. And they're training camps within America, too. Well, the conditions are simple, folks. And put it on a personal basis. Put it on a church basis. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, God says, then will I hear from heaven. When, then will I heal their land right here in Newburgh area, right here in southwestern Michigan. Are you ready to stand before God? If not, will you bow the knee before him today and accept him as your Lord and Savior? We don't have a whole lot of time. And Christian, are you ready to stand before him at the judgment seat? Oh, you're going to heaven. Thank God for that. Thank God for that. But we live such sloppy lives. We're just about like the other day, Mary and I thought we'd get out of Dodge last Thursday. So we thought we'd go and watch the waves come in at, at South Haven. We got over there. We couldn't see the lake. There were thousands of teenagers and maybe 20-year-olds uh, and so forth there on the beach. And some of them didn't have suits. They just had uh, dental floss. And uh, <laughs> what's, what's happened in America? You know, my, our glasses started steaming up and we got out of there. <laughs> she said hers weren't steaming. Yeah, they were because she was fuming. <laughs> but, folks, it's time to pray. Let's pause in prayer. Our Father, when we look at America, we say thank you, Lord, for America of the past, the America that we grew up in, the America that afforded us the privileges that we have and the opportunities to take advantage of these things. But Lord, we know that America's in trouble now. And we pray for this great country. We know that righteousness exalteth the nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. And we know that we have a good constitution and we've guarded it safely through the years but Father, we also know that a country like this, a democracy, cannot, cannot last without a righteous people. And we see things deteriorating in America that we've loved. God, help us as your people to fall on our faces before you because we don't know how much time we have. We don't know what your program is and when your coming might be. So help us each one to get right ourselves and then to seek to win as many people as we can to you, especially our family. Oh God, give us a burden for souls, I pray. Give us a love and a burden for our loved ones. Now, th Father, we pray again for tonight's meeting. We pray that you would make it a blessing, bless those who attend, and may it be just a capstone on this day. Dismiss us with your blessing, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.